For this activity, you will need Reality Composer, Safari, GarageBand, and Files. How do we get 3D assets to build our scene? Let's use Sketchfab. Open Safari, and in Google, type in Sketchfab. You will need to log in or sign up. You can use your Apple ID and hide your email if you want to ensure your privacy when using this app. Type B into the search field. Select Downloadable and Animated to filter your results. We can see this B is animated and can be downloaded. Tap on the download arrow. The B has been created by Jacob Henry and is under Creative Commons license, so we can use this. Tap on the USDZ file format, which is native to Apple. Tap on the AR Quick Look symbol in the top right corner. Your model will open in AR mode. Tap on the Object tab. You can spin your model to view it. Tap on Share in the top right corner and tap on Save to Files. Now let's repeat these steps for a sunflower. Type in sunflower and check Downloadable. We don't need it to animate. Let's choose this sunflower. Tap the download arrow. We can see this also has a Creative Commons license, so we can use it. Tap on the USDZ file format to download. Tap the AR Quick Look symbol, view your model, tap share, and save to files. Open Reality Composer and the file B Pollinator Animation from the link below on this page. In the file are two scenes, one with 3D assets placed and empty behaviour cards. The second scene is completed with animation for you to check if you get stuck. Let's have a look at the animation we're going to be creating together. We are going to import our sunflower and bee. Open up the side panel and tap plus on scenes. Choose a horizontal anchor. Tap on the cube and delete and tap on the text box and delete. We are going to build our scene around the main anchor point. Let's import our models. Tap plus in the top right corner. Tap on import and find your sunflower and bee and tap open. Tap on your sunflower to import it into the 3D environment. It might seem a little bit huge, so let's scale it down using the transform panel. Drag down the scale slider to resize. We have three access arrows, green, red, and blue. There are also three access rings that we can tap and drag to rotate or tap and drag in and out to resize. We can use the arrows to reposition our 3D assets within the 3D environment. Make sure your sunflower is sitting in the ground Tap and hold on the green arrow and drag downwards. Make a copy of your sunflower. Tap on your sunflower. Tap duplicate. Resize and rotate to make a smaller sunflower. Let's import our B asset. Tap on plus to open the content library. Find your B and select to import into our 3D environment. Our B is just a little bit oversized, so we'll use the transform panel to scale him down. We want to make our B fly, so tap and hold on the green arrow and drag him into the air. If we use our blue axis or our red axis to rotate our B, it rotates on a strange angle. Tap on the green arrow and rotate your B horizontally. We'll create some pollen using a star as we did in Keynote. Tap on plus and open up the content library. Scroll down until you find the primitive shape star. You will need to use your axis rotation wheels to turn the star around. On the transform panel, we can scale our star up. We can even change the diameter, the thickness, the inset, and add on many more points to our star to create a sticky pollen grain. Let's change the fill of our star to a dark pink for effect. We are going to attach the pollen to the bee's rear legs. Use the arrows to move the pollen into place and scale if needed. Try to get the pollen as close to the bee's legs as possible. Duplicate the pollen. Tap on the pollen and from the banner choose Duplicate. Use the arrows to move this pollen on the other side of the bee. We need to group the pollen. Zoom in as close as you can. Tap and hold on one pollen and tap on the other and select Group. When you use the arrows, the pollen should move together. 
we are going to create a bigger group of the pollen and the bees. Tap and hold on the pollen and tap on the bee and choose group. The bee and the pollen should be grouped together. Use the arrows to move the bee to check. Now scale the bee to make him smaller. We want the bee and the pollen to fly together. We won't need to show it for the whole time, but we can use some different behavior cards later on to hide this. We need to duplicate the pollen. Zoom in as close as you can to the bee and tap hierarchical select. Select the second group on the list, which should be the pollen. You will see a blue outline around the group showing you what is selected. From the banner, tap on the arrow and choose duplicate. Zoom out on your screen, tap on your screen and choose paste. Use your arrows to move the pollen into position on the flower. You may need to use your arrows to move the pollen up or down or rotate it. We are going to make our bee fly from one flower to the next. Open the behaviors panel. Tap plus next to behaviors. Tap trigger and scroll to find custom. Tap on trigger, scene start. This means when our scene starts, our animations or sounds will play. Tap on action sequence and choose USDZ animation. We can see an alert saying this behavior is not applied to any asset yet. Zoom in close to the bee and tap on it. The bee should highlight in green as the behavior is applied and the alert should disappear. Rename your behavior to help you know what each set of behaviors will do. We'll name this one bee flying. We want the bee to move across the screen to the flower. Tap on plus action sequence and choose move rotate scale to behavior card. Scroll down and tap clear position and clear rotation. Tap choose next to affected objects. Zoom in close to the bee and tap it. It will highlight in green to show it has been selected. Tap on the move rotate scale to card. The bee moves backwards, which is not what we want. Tap and hold on the red arrow and drag the bee over the flower. Tap and hold on the green arrow and drag the bee down toward the flower. Tap play on the USDZ animation card and then tap play on move rotate scale two card. If we tap play next to action sequence, our bee animates and then flies, but he is static. To get the bee to fly and animate, we need to merge our behavior cards together. Tap and hold on the move rotate scale two card and drag and drop it on top of the USDZ animation card. Tap play next to action sequence. Your bee should fly to the flower. He's moving a bit fast and stops with his wings still flapping. We can see the USDZ animation timing is 1.9 seconds and our move card is one second. Our timings need to be identical. On the move card, tap on one second and change to 1.9 seconds to match. To make our animation faster, and so we don't need to guess at repositioning the bee for each movement, we need to duplicate our USDZ animation card and the combined move rotate scale two for each added movement. Tap and hold on the USDZ animation card and tap duplicate. Tap and hold on the move rotate scale two card and tap duplicate. Rearrange the cards so the USDZ animation is always first in the sequence. Your B may appear to be back at the start, but tap on the second move rotate scale two card and you will see it is over the flower. Make the B land on the flower. Use the axis arrows and rings to move and rotate the B to be sitting on the flower. Zoom in close and pan around the scene to help you. Combine your two behavior cards together in the second sequence and tap play in the top right to see your bee fly across the screen and land on the flower. Repeat the steps to duplicate the USDZ animation card and move rotate scale two card. Make sure you duplicate the second set of cards in the sequence. Reorder the cards with USDZ always first. We want the bee to move around on the flower when we try to use our axis arrows and rings, the bee rotates at a strange angle because we have already moved the bee out of its normal rotation orbit. Now tap on the three dots in the top right corner and choose transform local. This will change how we can rotate the bee. 
Tap and hold on your green ring and rotate your bee around so it appears to move around the flower collecting pollen. Merge the two behaviour cards together. Tap play to test to see the bee fly, land and rotate. Duplicate your two behaviour cards again, making sure to duplicate the third set. We want the bee to take off from the flower now. Use the axis arrows to move the bee up and away from the flower. Tap and hold on the green axis ring to rotate the bee toward the flower with the pollen. Reorder and merge the two behaviour cards together. Tap play to test to see the bee fly, land, rotate and take off. We want the bee to land on the flower with the pollen. We need to move the bee into place so the pollen on the bee's legs will match as close as possible to the pollen on the flower. Duplicate the USDZ animation card and then the Move Rotate Scale 2 card and zoom in. We want it to look like the bee will leave the pollen behind. Zoom in as close as you can and use all three axis arrows and rings to rotate and reposition the bee. Keep rotating around and changing the angle so you are able to line it up. Be patient, you will get there. Merge the two behaviour cards together. Tap play in the top right to test. If you notice the pollen isn't lined up, tap on your move rotate scale two behavior card and adjust. We want the bee to fly away. Duplicate the two behavior cards. Tap on the three dots in the top right and change our rotation back to world. This will make it easier to move. Tap on your move card, move your bee up and away from the flower and rotate it so it looks to be flying away. Combine your two behaviour cards together. Tap play to test. Duplicate your behaviour cards one last time. Tap on your move card. Move your bee away from the flowers so he is flying away. Merge your behaviour cards together. Tap play in the top corner to watch your bee fly across the screen, land on the flower, rotate, fly to the second flower fly up and away off the screen. We need to hide and show the pollen so it appears to move from the bee to the flower. We'll use hierarchy select for this. Tap on plus, behavior, custom. If we check our bee flying behaviors, we have used scene star as our trigger. So let's apply that here so everything works from the same trigger. Tap on action sequence and select hide. Rename the behaviour so we know what we are hiding, the pollen on the bee. Our affected object is the pollen group we created and attached to the bee. Zoom in as close as possible as you can to the pollen. Tap and hold on the bee and choose the second group down in the list. Just the pollen should highlight green so you know it is selected. Tap play on the hide behaviour card. It fades instead of hides. Reduce the time from one second to zero. Tap play and the pollen should hide. We want the pollen to be hidden until the bee reaches the flower and then appear as the bee rotates on the flower. Tap plus on action sequence and select the wait card. We can go back and look at our bee flying behavior card sequence and add up the time it takes the bee to reach the flower or we could just estimate. Let's try a 4.5 second wait. Now we need our pollen to show. Tap on action sequence and choose show behavior card. We need to apply the behavior to the pollen. Zoom all the way back into the bee. Tap and hold and select the second group in the list. Just like the hide behavior, the show will fade on so we need to make the time zero seconds. Tap play next to action sequence to see what happens. Our bee isn't flying as we are only testing the hide show cards, not the flying. If we check the bee flying behavior, our hide show isn't working as we are only testing that behavior card set. Tap play in the top right to see if the pollen hides and shows while the bee flies. Adjust the timing if required. We need the pollen to hide as the bee reaches the other flower. Tap and hold on the wait card and tap duplicate. Drag the card on the other side of show. So we don't need to reselect our pollen, duplicate the hide card at the start and drag this to the end of the sequence. 
we need to time our weight card so the pollen will hide as the bee touches down on the flower. You may need to do a little bit of trial and error to get the timing right. You can put in points of time to make it more precise. We need to hide the pollen on the flower so it shows when the bee lands here. Zoom into the flower. Tap on plus, behavior, custom. Tap trigger, scene start. Rename your behavior so you know it's the pollen on the flower. Tap plus, action sequence and add a hide card. Tap the pollen on the flower for the affected object and your duration as zero. Tap plus, action sequence and add a wait card. Add a duration of around 9.5 seconds. Tap plus, action sequence, show card. Tap the pollen for the affected object and duration as zero seconds. Tap play in the top right. You may need to adjust the timing so the pollen on the flower shows just as the pollen on the bee disappears. Let's add some sound to our scene. We already created audio files for Keynote so we can reuse these. Tap on plus, add behavior, custom. Tap on trigger, scene start. Tap on action sequence and choose play sound from an object. Tap our bee as our affected object so the sound is attached to the bee. Next to the audio clip, tap choose. Tap import. Select the bee and bush sounds and tap open. In the list, tap on the B sounds so it has a check next to it. Adjust the volume and rename your behavior so you know what sound you added. Tap play in the top corner to test the sound on the scene. With spatial audio on the iPad, the sound attached to an asset will get louder the closer it is to you and softer the further away it is. And the sound will come from the left or the right speaker, dependent on where the asset with the sound is sitting on the screen, creating a realistic soundscape. Move your scene around to test out spatial audio. Now see if you can add on another behavior card to import the ambient bush sounds. But this time for your action sequence, choose the behavior card, play music. As we want this to be ambient sounds, lower the volume so it doesn't take over the whole scene. Let's open GarageBand. Swipe up to reveal your dock and tap on GarageBand. Tap on the microphone in the top right. Tap on plus in the top right of the timeline. Tap on section A and check you have this set to automatic so you can record as much as you need. I have a script I have written in pages as a guide, which I will overlay with slide over. When I'm ready to record, I will tap record and start speaking. Don't forget to turn off the metronome. If I don't like my recording, I can undo and record again. When, when I am happy with my recording, I need to export to this from GarageBand into a workable audio file format. Or male part of the flower will attach to some of Tap on the sheet in the top left to return to your GarageBand files. Double tap to rename your file so you can easily find it. Tap and hold to bring up your action sheet. Choose Share. Tap Song, select Uncompressed Wave and Share. Tap Open in App, wait for your song to export and tap Save Files. Your audio recording will be exported into your Files app. Now back in Reality Composer, we can add in our voice recording. Open the Behaviors panel, tap on Plus, Custom. Tap on Trigger and select Scene Start. Tap on Plus, Action Sequence and select Play Ambience. Rename your behavior. Tap on Import and find your exported audio file you just made in GarageBand. Make sure it has a check next to it. Test the audio. You may need to adjust the volume Tap play on your behavior card to test the audio. When a bee Tap play in the top right to test your scene with animation, bee, and voice audio. When a bee collects nectar from flowers to take back to the hive to make honey, some of the sticky pollen grains from the stamen will attach to some of the hairs on the bee's legs. As the bee flies to the next flower, some of the pollen will be transferred from the bees to this flower. 
landing on the stigma, thus pollinating the flower. Now it's time to try out our scene in AR. Find a space, such as the desk or the floor. Reality Composer needs to anchor the scene to a surface. You will also need enough light in the environment. If I don't have enough light, sometimes I use the torch on my iPhone. Tap on AR in the top right corner. An iPad with LiDAR will place the scene almost instantly. The iPad will place the scene on the anchor. You will notice a grid underneath this. Pinch to resize or reposition the scene. Tap play to watch your scene in AR. The grid should disappear. You can move your iPad up, over and around the scene to get a more immersive experience. Back to the hive to make honey. Some of the sticky pollen grains from the stamen will attach to some of the hairs on the bee's legs. As Tap stop when you are done. When you feel ready for more complex scene building in Reality Composer, try adding in more flowers and even some more bees. When a bee collects nectar from flowers to take back to the hive to make or you might even want to build your own pollinator's garden. When a bee collects nectar from flowers to take back to the hive to make honey, some of the sticky pollen grains from the stamen will attach to Try the experimenting the with place. many different things As in Reality Composer and see where your creative imagination will take you.